Hi team and welcome back to this week's edition of Color Theory. So we're diving a little bit deeper into color theory. So this is lesson, Unit 1, Lesson 3, so 1.3, um, Color Models. So our standard is create and model space using specific color schemes and our learning target and success criteria is I can create and model a space using specific color schemes. So today, moving on, so our career spotlight is a textile designer. So you need to read the blog where I have my little finger here. So I'm going to click on that and it's popping up the actual article of what a textile designer is. So you need to read through this short article on what it is and what it takes to be a textile designer. And you need to think about the questions. What is the educational requirement? Well, how about the salary? What is the salary uh, a textile designer can expect to make? And where do they work? And then here is, I've, I've attached a blog with pictures about textile designers. So if you wanted to go dive a little deeper into your learning. As always, please fill out those questions and answers on this next page. What does a textile designer do? And then I have a color survey. So I really hope this survey really works because it's attached to my Gmail. Um, so if you can't access it, don't, I don't want to say don't worry, but I want you to try. Um, I want you to think what is the most popular color? Why do you think that is? And what is the least favorite color? And why do you think that was? Um, with that, I have, here is that color survey. So I'm taking a survey on what that color is. And then during our synchronous time together on Tuesday and Thursday, I'm going to reveal what our entire class's favorite color and least favorite color was. So be ready, and I hope this works. And if it doesn't, we'll figure out another way. Um, but I believe I have it set up just right. So with, I want you guys to, this is the writing prompt. What is the most popular, what was the most popular color? It's, you don't, I just want you to think what is the most popular color and why you think that was and what do you think the least favorite color is and why so uh, moving on we have our work session so i want you to review color information from the color schemes and color theory slides uh slide six or actually it's eight through 15. so color is everywhere so here we have a bunch of different various uh, color wheels and here is the actual color wheel and you can see how we go from the darkest color to the lightest color so remember dark means shade tint means white um, and then we have our grays in between and we're going to dive a little deeper into grays this round so the relationships with color schemes so monochromatic remember that is one color so in the various tints and shades of using that one color so here we have adding white on this top part and then adding black shading and here are some pablo picasso paintings of using the tone of blue now we have complementary colors colors directly across from each other on the color wheel and here is a fun little example of that and we have green and red and just like kermit the frog green and red and what color combinations are the nicest complementary colors you look lovely i like your hair you're great so when two complementary colors are mixed they neutralize each other by creating brown and here's more complementary color examples, different logos. And then we have the analogous colors. So that is three to four colors directly next to each other on the color wheel. So remember, we have that red, red, orange, 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 yellow, and so forth. 
And this includes that tertiary color. And remember, tertiary means intermediate. Moving on to split complementary colors, one color and the two directly next to it, next to it complement. And so here are some examples of Vincent van Gogh and another really nice painting of a, a nice drastic red with complementing it with a bright green apple. Then we have triadic, tertiary, intermediate, and that is where three colors evenly spaced around the color wheel. So here we have a blue purple, a red orange, and a yellow green. They are within that intermediate family. Then we have conspiracy of colors. So uh, just some fun stuff for you to look at. Now we're going to go into our actual work session. So you're going to go and visit two paint stores and virtually, not in person, but virtually. Uh, so you're going to go to this uh, bear.com for colors. And I've given you the preview links right here. And all you have to do is hold down that CTRL button, control and right click, which will then open. So you have the bare paint. So now you get to choose out of the colors of what you like. And this is just playing around with it. So, and I'll bring over the Sherwin-Williams. So here we have Sherwin-Williams and looking at different palettes of paint. So this is more of a pottery barn theme color. So what you're going to be doing with this particular uh, paint and color schemes, you're going to be able to screen, you're going to be creating your own color schemes for using the different styles of paint from there. And you're going to paste them in, uh, you're going to screenshot one room in three different color schemes. And you're going to paste that into onto the next slides, the next three slides in your digital interactive notebook. So how I'm going to do that, I'm bringing my colors over. So here is my Sherwin-Williams. I have Revel Blue. And now I've just dropped, dragged and clicked. So I have a nice blue. And then I'm going to do my off-white right here. Oh, no. And then, let's see. I'm going to do maybe some gray. For the crown molding. So now there's a little bit of pop. So now I am, all I'm going to do is I'm going to screenshot this picture. And here I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull up my snipping tool. All right, now that my snipping tool has loaded, I'm going to select new. And I'm going to click and drag. Control C as always. And I'm going to go back to my interactive notebook and now I am going to input it. So there she is. I'm going to resize her. So with that, what I want you to do now with your color scheme, I need you to point, uh, write out what the three colors are for each of your color schemes. So I would do this for, I'm going to write down so what that color is. So we have Quest Gray, and you'd also have to go back to the bare paint. And that was, then we have Revel Blue, and then Alabaster. So those were the colors, and I would write those three colors down in color scheme one. And then you need to find two other color schemes that you like and do the same thing and add them to your digital notebook. I'm going to delete that. So now we're going to move on to more tints, tones, and 
shades. So you're going to work through this interactive lesson on the following slides about tints, shades, and value of color. So value, tints, and shades. So here on value, we have baby blue, cornflower, azure, steel, and royal. So on this swatch, these are all variations of the hue blue. The word hue refers to pure, unmixed color. So now the value is the element of the art that refers to the lightness or darkness of color. So we have the lighter, so this light green, to this dark uh, royal blue um, for that hue. So value, when you mix color or hue with white, it creates something called tint, like we've been talking about. So the more white you add, the lighter the color will become. And of course, when you mix a color or hue with black, it creates a called shade. So we have the color black equals the shade, so a dark green. So the more black you add, the darker the color will be. So now this is an interactive part. So I want you to drag and drop where you think is a tint on the color wheel and what is a shade and drag, drag and drop somewhere on the color wheel. All right, where you think is the correct place. So now when you mix a color or hue with gray, it creates a tone. So we have our color, our green, our gray, which equals a tone. So it's a very, it's a softer, more subtle. So the more gray you add, the more muted or dull the end color will be. So we have value. So when you add white, it's tint. When you add gray, it's tone. That's that intermediate color. And when you add black, it creates a shade. So that is our end up hue. So this is the interactive part. So I need you to drag and drop where each of these colors belong on this uh, wheel. Now we're gonna go more with more uh, drag and drops for interactive. So you need to select each of these colors of purple and drag and drop on the value scale to help, uh, help practice. So value scales are arranged from lightest to darkest. Sort boxes below to create a value scale for the hue purple. And now we're, we have another interactive uh, slide. So use the colored dots on the sidebar right here and complete the chart below. So remember, tint means you add white, tone means you add gray, so it dulls the color, and then shade for adding black. So I will give this one to you where we have yellow, so we've added white, tone for gray, and then shade for black. So it goes lighter, medium, darkest. So now you need to drag and drop the correct colors in all of these boxes below in the, in the precise areas. So now we have another work session. So you're gonna make your own mood board in Canva. So I'm gonna go over and drag. So I have, so on this slide, mood board, I've created this all shades of blue and green. And now Canva, I've just given you what this mood board looks like. But you're going to go into Canva if yourself. So you're going to go into Canva yourself and you're going to type into the search bar here and you're going to say collage. And you're going to choose this photo collage, which now you can now select mood boards photo collage. And you get to create your own mood board just by using different images. So here you go up to photos and let's say, so I want to look at all shades of brown. Look at, we have these golden uh, brown tones. 
you could choose that you could fall or you could choose blue just different variations of the color blue and you're going to have to look up different photos that you can use to choose how to create your own personal mood board so if you have any questions give me uh join me during my virtual office hours uh, 11 45 to 12 45 daily and i can help you one by one if you, if you need assistance and now i've also created this little mood board for you as well where you can drag and drop pictures into this already made up mood board if you didn't want to create a mood board within canva but you would have to go and find the color palettes and various different pictures that are associated with your color palette finally in closing you're going to be writing an explanation of how the different color schemes impact the same room and on this last slide you would be writing your explanation so make sure that it is at least one solid paragraph explaining how different color schemes impact the same room so as always come visit me during my virtual office hours monday through friday 11 45 to 12 45 and i will see you in class on tuesday and friday at 1 20 and or 205. I hope to see you soon. Have a great week. Bye.